Hey everybody and welcome to another Jamovi video. It's been a while since we've had Jamovi on the channel and for the next several weeks the Jamovi videos are going to be based around some of the modules that you can download uh, to or and install within Jamovi so you can uh, have slightly more robust or more efficient ways to deal with your data and analysis. So before we get started I want to go ahead and let you know that it's been a since it's been a while um, there haven't been any major Jamovi releases but at least for Max, uh, Mac OS, the current version is 2.4.12. Um, this may or may not be the same as the Windows version of, uh, of Jamovi, but be that as it may, I mean, they're all very, very similar and you can do the same things in them. Uh, the the 2.4.12 version that I have was a specific uh, iterative update for bug fixes on Mac OS. So don't worry about it, Windows users, if you're watching this video and you don't have the same um, version as me. Uh, 2.4 is the major release um, that last occurred in 2023. So we're looking forward to the next major release of Jamovi, a video on that when it occurs. So again, we are going to be doing a uh, module set of videos over the next several weeks, module videos. So these module videos are going to be found in the top row here. Um, you can now side scroll if you've got a side scroller. Unfortunately, um, it doesn't look like I, I have a side scroll on my mouse, but um, top scroll I don't doesn't work here. Um, so I'm not entirely sure how the scroll works. Now, how do you add modules? Well, you go up to this plus menu and it's going to bring up all of your modules in a drop down with all of their sub menus installed. But you just go up to Jamovi library or manage installed and you've got what you have installed. I have all available ones. You can hide them if you want and they won't show up in your top bar. They'll still be installed. So you can do that now. I was going from an, uh, quite a significantly older version, updating it for this, this video. So I had to update all of them. But there is a search bar up here if you want to look. They are not in alphabetical order, so the search is massively needed. If there are other available uh, modules here, you will see the install button. This is also where you will see the update button, right? So that is how you add these. And then you click on here to get rid of them. Okay, so for this video, we're going to talk about the J. Actually, I'm going to pull it back up. Let's go to manage installed. I'm going to go to the J reshape and show you. Oops, I did not mean to do. There we go. J reshape, Marcello Gallucci. Okay, reshape data sets, 0.1.5. Reshape data sets from wide to long format or from long to wide format. The module offers a simple interface for simple reshaping and a more complex interface for more elaborated forms of reshaping. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video after that heavy premise. So, so where to find that plus the additional one, which we'll talk about in another video, J transform. So J reshape, J transform. J reshape is a smaller package. Um, but you can get the same effect if you get just a J transform. So you can do either or. And when I click on data here, right, it's flashing because it's a new package that I installed. So when I click on it, you can. Uh, so if you have J reshape, you're just going to see wide to long and long to wide. If you have J transform, you're going to see all these other ones. But you can see here long to wide and wide to long. OK, so J transform includes the functions of J reshape. But in this video, we're only going to talk about um, J reshape, which are these two options here. Let me go ahead and open up some data so we can see uh, how this works. So I'm gonna go to open, I'm gonna go to data library, and I am, huh, I'm just gonna go ahead and open up the big five Dolan at 2000, at all 2009. And I'm just gonna show you what happens. So reshaping is a function for uh, something that you would need for hierarchical linear modeling, where you need wide data. So columns become cases and rows become variables, right? So we have a we have a typically set up situation here where we have our variables as columns and we have our cases as rows. But if you wanted to do hierarchical linear modeling, you have to have these flipped. So how you do that and which is, I think, a great idea is you can go up to one of these. Obviously, we need to get to long to wide, right? Because this is 500 cases. Yeah, 500 cases. So instead of 500 rows, we want 500 columns. So we are going to go from long to wide. OK, and we are going to say that we want rows to columns. Oh, no, that's the opposite. Long to wide. Please insert the rows to columns. So actually, we want uh, wide to long. My bad. Let's get rid of you. Let's get rid of you. Remove wide to long. OK. So if we click on that, columns to rows, and you can have basic or advanced, basic or advanced. I'm not going to go through the advanced because it's just it's a lot, right? So we're going to grab those four and then we're going to say columns to rows. Um, you can, if you had like um, a subject variable, you could say non varying, uh, non varying variables. OK, so constants, for example, would go here. Right? Non varying variables. It's not great. Not great. Target variable. Of course, we're going from columns to rows. So you would want to name what your target variable is, which doesn't really make sense. But there it is. OK. So with this module, you can transform a data set from a wide format to the long format. To do this, select variables columns from the original data set that you want to convert into different row variables and enter them in the columns row field. In the new data set, a variable specified in the target variable field will be 
created containing one row for each column value in each case. So let's, we'll just call it Y. Additionally, a variable named uh, in the research repeated measures levels field will be created, which corresponds to the original column names, conditions, or times. A variable ID will also be created containing the case ID, which represents the original row number in wide format. If there are variables whose values should, should be copied for each row of the same cases, so invariant, covariance, covariates, excuse me, you can add them to the non-varying variables. <laughs> Once you are ready, click reshape to open a new file. This is the strength of this new module. It opens up a new file. So your old, your, this, this current file that we're playing with, not touched which is great. So let's go through what happens here. Okay. So as you can see, we're going to have a lot of rows. We're going to have almost 25,000 rows, right? Uh, because yeah, we, we are going to have 20, 2,500 rows, not 25,000. Sorry. So Y is going to be created as the value for participant one on neuroticism. And you can see one, 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 one. And this is incredibly important. So this is what it's going to look like. And so in hierarchical linear modeling or multi-level model modeling, you need these multi-levels because they go into the equation just like this. This is like repeated measures on steroids, right? So we have, um, what it looks like repeated levels measures right so we have 500 so if i wanted to do a hierarchical linear model this is what happens index variable name um this is what it's going to put in the column it's going to say index you can say um b5 trait right bing and it's going to change that to b5 trait and why i mean we can just we could, we could say value whatever right value on the test um and then the values um are going to be either columns name columns index or prefix plus index and then you can specify that there. Now, of course, I don't have any other variables here, so nothing is going to change. Although here's where you might put in gender, right? So it would add a column that says gender and it would say, well, so let's say zero is men and one is women. It would do zero, 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 five. It would do five zeros for, for ID one and then all the way down, right? It wouldn't give new values for each of those. Kind of wish I had one of those, but oh well. And then you hit reshape and it's going to open up a new file. It opened up, uh, opened it up off screen, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and make it all big and stuff. Okay. And as you can see, ID is here, Y is here, and big five trait is here. And this uh, value, the B5 trait, every fifth one is neuroticism, right? Neuroticism, 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 one and six, one. And you can go through and all of the values here are good. Let's go back the other way. Let's use the same data set to go back the other way. So we just did, well, let, me, let me double check that we, we did wide to long. So let's go ahead and do long to wide, okay? So rows to columns is going to be big five trait. Uh, indexing variable, I believe is the, uh, uh, please insert in the indexing variable field, the variable containing the levels of the repeated measures factor. There we go. And then, no, rows to columns. I oh, know ID variables right here. Let's see. Let's see if that's the correct way to do it. Nope, it's the other way around. There we go. So row one is ID one, and then they have all of their uh, have all of their uh, things, and then all the way down, and then 450 more not shown here, right? So then we hit reshape and opens it up off screen, and then we have our original data set. <laughs> we have our original data set right here. This looks slightly different with our y dot openness, y dot neuroticism, y dot, and then our ID variable, but then all 500 cases. So that's the reshape J reshape module, just converting. Uh, data sets to wide or long format, depending on what kind of analysis you are planning on doing. If you have any comments, suggestions, other kinds of feedback, questions, please leave those in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.